a banana peel on the staircase and that's it you know you are an emergency case however when you turn up at the emergency unit they need to plug all these expensive machines to keep you alive and those machines don't come for free i mean they're not donated by red cross they come at a huge cost now you lying down probably at the time you don't have any id on you so you don't really look like you can afford it the doctor now has to make a call how do i look after you how do i plug these machines into you when you wake up who's going to pay and this is serious now in most countries most advanced countries where they have strict insurance policies as for emergency as soon as you turn up there you looked after and then when you come back alive and you're not able to pay they sort of sort you out or find a way to sort the hospital out now that's a big gap which we don't have so ask yourself all this time that there's emergency unit and how many times will the taxi driver just pick somebody off the road and rush them off to Kolobu? Have anybody wondered what happens or who looks after that person? This is a serious discussion that's to be on the table until it's resolved. And I have just started it. And I hope this is not just the beginning uh, or this is not the end of it, but just the beginning. If nobody is around the TV round, if you have, you know, grandmas and uncles and anything who are not by the TV, call them to come and listen to this discussion it would let you panic and so that the next time when you are demanding things from your authorities it probably won't be street light but it will be an assurity when one day you get driven to Kolebu because every case eventually gets referred to Kolebu. My name is Nana Sakwa. this is PM Express and we have an emergency. Stay tuned for coming. Thank you very much for staying. And as I said, we are looking at Kolebu Emergency Unit, which is in a crisis. Now, it is one of those things that we should not wait for it to happen, even though quite recently it happened. But let's just bring this conversation now. Let us get those, uh, like quote unquote, the powers that be, be aware that this is one area where we can't politicize, we can't neglect. We need to act and act now because anyone, anybody from president right down to the common denominator could be an emergency case. But when it happens, what then happens? My name is Nana Sakwa and with me in the studio right next to me is Dr. Samuel Esiama, uh, who is a medical director at Kolebu. Doc, you're welcome. Thank you. And then I have Professor Ernest Anite, who is the head of the uh, Department of Anesthesia. Prof, you're welcome. Thank you very much. And for God and country, they are here to scare us all. Uh, <laughs> I, watched, I watched a medical documentary, uh, House. I don't know if you've seen House. It's like uh -huh. a medical comedy. And there's this doctor who's very brash. So he goes to a patient and reads the patient's list. Like you have a punctured lung, you have a kid, you know, fractured liver, everything. So the patient said, should I be afraid? He says, oh, yes, be very afraid. <laughs> so, so that's exactly what you do. Be very afraid. But there's a short clip, and then after the clip, the conversation goes on. So watch this. care unit or ICU as you would hear is um, a critical care area of the hospital where patients who are critically ill or patients who are very seriously ill are taken care of. Uh, what I mean by 
critically or seriously ill are patients who on their own may not be able to support their life and are requiring constant monitoring and intervention by doctors, nurses and other medical staff. Critical Care Fund, as it's called, simply means a fund that we're going to use to take care of patients who are in critical need. And what am I talking about? Patients who are brought in and they need emergency services, which include coming to the quality emergencies around, ICU, and some patients that may need emergency surgery. So this is supposed to support the needs of these patients. One patient alone on arrival, first day, resuscitation and stabilization would take about 2,000 Ghana cities. Very expensive. Then the subsequent days, close to about 2,000. So you can imagine if one patient is going to spend about a week or two, that's about 10,000. And most Ghanaians cannot afford. Most Ghanaians cannot afford. It's so expensive. And they are having difficulties. Sometimes the relatives tell you point blank, I can't buy the drug or I can't pay the bill. All you have to do is to take them to the uh, social welfare. And sometimes they are declared paupers. There's nothing you can do about it. They can't afford. Well, Fidelity came around, you know, as bank, as a bank, they want business. But as part of their corporate uh, responsibility towards Mandagana, they came around looking for business and I also took the opportunity to tell them, well, you came in for business, you will do what you may, but this is also a need that we have as a hospital. What do you have for us? Then immediately said, give us some few days, we'll get back to you. And we were here when they said, we are ready to partner you. We'll use all our branches countrywide to solicit. And we'll also help you to manage the fund for it to grow. So that day in day out, we have enough funds to be able to solve these emergencies for people. And this is how they came here. And I'm very, very glad um, Fidelity is a partner in this. I don't think anyone can underscore the importance of healthcare in any society and most importantly in a developing nation like Ghana and therefore we believe as a bank that our support for a very laudable initiative as the Critical Care Fund is a step in the right direction. Fidelity Bank is a young emerging bank. We are the biggest private sector indigenous bank in this country. We are just about nine years old and counting. We are determined to be the bank, the choice bank for the people of this country. We want to be in every community. We want our people to access our facilities, our services and our products without having to travel long distances. We are a customer centric bank. We are welcoming, we are warm. And we want our people, Ghanaians, to identify with their own bank. When you go to any country abroad, the local banks, the indigenous banks, lead the development of the countries, partnering government and the private sector to develop their countries abroad. And we want to be that bank for this country to support government business and also to support private initiatives like the Critical Care Fund. I think it's a very important and a very good course for every institution or individual to be able to contribute to this course as it could be something that could happen to any of us. It could be somebody who works with Fidelity Bank or any other bank or any other section of the society. It could be an individual and at that point you'd really need attention from the emergency services of Kolebu. Kolebu will remember and for all those coming through Kolebu and seeking clinical services will forever be grateful to you. Tomorrow when you walk through Kolebu and all our emergency services are up and running, 
that you know we have a good partner in Fidelity. So we want to say same to all those who want to come and partner. We will duly recognize you as you contribute to your quota regularly to make sure that this fund grows and takes care of people of Ghana. I am excited about this and I'm personally also going to contribute to this. Not only with my skills, but also with my money. And I want you to be safe. Hmm. So that's the uh, situation on the ground. Uh, let me introduce my guest again. He sat next to me is Dr. Samuel Isiama, uh, medical director at Kolibu, and then Professor Ernest Anite, who's the uh, head of the uh, anesthetics department, also here. Huh. Let me start with you, uh, Dr. Isiama. I mean, how, how long has it been like this? <laughs> mm. Well, you see how I'm trying to sit up. <laughs> it's been a long way here. Um, he will tell you more about it because he's mm. at the heart of it. Um, mm. In the past, we, you know, when you, we do surgeries, um, you have to be taken to a specialized area with all the gadgets, as you were trying to explain to revive you when you're out of danger before you are taken to the world to continue management. So in those days, there was nothing like an ICU. So they actually use what we call the recovery war, double it up as an ICU for all such cases. It so happens that if you have so many of such cases that are on ventilators or on any of these gadgets, it therefore becomes difficult for another person to be operated on. Because if you operate, you have to go to recovery and get the recovery services. It's not available. So if, say, you have 12 beds, you have 12 surgeries, the beds are full. So if you come in as an emergency, you have to wait. Only God knows what happens thereafter. So if that someone doesn't recover quickly and move out, for us to make a recovery ward bed available, so you risk can come on, and you may lose your life. So anesthesia department saw this danger. That was in 2008. 2008, yes. yes. <clears throat> and so they pushed management, and then we established an ICU service. And we needed huge help. Thankfully, some new gadgets have come in, and they came along with extra costs. Because modernization, new tubes, they are now using sensors, very efficient. Everything about these gadgets are imported. Nothing is produced here. So if you work in Mr. A and you are pushed into the ICU, we are looking at an average of about 1,000, 1,002 per day on the average. And you saw what the nurse said in the clip. Can go as high as uh, 2,000 per day. And he will tell you more about the problems yeah, he's going yeah, through now. Go to uh, Prof. Prof. <laughs> uh, you see, we've always had at the back of our mind that, uh, well, even if you can't afford it and it's an emergency, if it's a genuine emergency, crossing the road, taxi runs you down. As for that one, you know, you bypass the system and you get looked after. Uh, but it may not be quite like that. Um, yes, I think the main problem is if you, let's say, get knocked down by a taxi, the initial resuscitation may be started in the uh, accident and emergency. But then the problem is if you have three, four, uh, three or four fractured uh, bones, you fractured some ribs, then it means you can't maintain your normal physiological function. That is where ICU comes in. The ICU is just supposed to mm -hmm. maintain the functions that you normally can't normally, you can't normally um, maintain. And what it means is you use a lot of machines and gadgets to support those areas, the chest, the heart, and sometimes the brain. Sometimes you may get knocked down and, and then your brain doesn't work properly. 
Now, to maintain those functions, you need a lot of gadgets, a lot. Um, a ventilator, a few other things. He mentioned 1,500, 2,000 sometimes. If more of your organs have failed and we have to dialyze, if your kidneys are not working, mm. then the costs are even a lot, a lot more. Um, and the majority of Ghanaians, even I, I don't think I can afford that care. You shut me up after two days. Yes. <laughs> and then if he's, he was talking about cases in our ICU, there are six cases in our recovery ward in the surgical unit at present, six. 60% of them are from obstetrics and maternity. Most of them are referred cases from the periphery. They are not patients who are normally looked after in Kolebu itself. Mm -hmm. And they are brought in really bad. And they, they are young. Most maternity patients are between 22, 33, 34. And we lose a lot of them, mainly because they come in late. And two, we don't have the facilities to maintain those functions. So it's, yes, so some of them pass away. That is the, that is the, the, so the if, bad aspect. If there had been a bed, the, yes. the chances of surviving? Not just a bed, but a bed fully equipped, fully equipped. with all the uh, drugs and things we need. Mm -hmm. Then you can save quite. We are saving quite a number of them, but I think the loss of life is unacceptable. Wow. Yes. You see, uh, it hasn't been brought to bear like this. I mean, since, what, 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 where was the breaking point that was, look, now we have to do something? No, I think um, over the last couple of years, the complexities of surgeries have increased. Mm. Uh, if you look at the hospital, there are different subspecialties. Kolebu is the last stop. Mm. Every case is referred to us when nobody else can do anything about it. Mm. We have the largest concentration of good, efficient specialists. And most of the machines that can work on those people, which other facilities can't use. So they're going to come to us. Mm. But I think with the growth of the subspecialties, the ICU part lagged behind. I think it's, if it wasn't in 2008, the hospital did not have a proper functioning general intensive care unit. Wow. The only intensive care unit at that time was a cardiothoracic center, which had catered for patients after open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. So in opening that, the hospital did well. I think the recent renovation has increased the capacity from six to 12 beds, okay. which means we can look after a lot more patients. The snag is the cost looking after these patients. Does the state not bear it? No. NHI can't pay for intensive care. They will go broke in six months. So, so who's paying for intensive care units? Out of pocket. That's yes. Okay. So patients who can pay out of pocket, yes. The rest, we treat them and bad debt. Um, I, I can't even tell you about a debt that I have in my department for intensive care alone. I, I don't even want to mention it on, on telly. The um, patient cannot pay? They can pay. And the state won't pay? No. 100% no. of obstetric patients don't pay anything at all. It's supposed to be NHI free maternal care. So the tubes and all that? N and nothing is paid for. Nothing. So whose, de whose decision would it be to say, look, OK, they're not going to pay, but we're still going to use it? Um, no, the thing is, if once the patient gets into the hospital, the patient is unwell, mm -hmm. and the bed is available, it is our duty to treat. We look after the costs of science. For some of the financial institutions who have money, um, and individuals who have money, they pay. But 60-70% of the patients can't pay, and it's bad. Maternity, almost 100% don't pay. And they form 60 to 70 percent of our admissions mm. presently. How, how do you get replenishment? That's the question. <laughs> and in fact, it's the reason why we are seated here. 
at this point, we are more like relying on suppliers' credits. So you owe suppliers. And the rates we are moving, if we don't put in remedial measures as we have started now, we've increased our bed capacity to 12, uh, hoping that we will save more lives. The reality check, if we don't get the funds to support, we may have to close along the line. And I doubt if we can do our year. Is the 12 beds... Is Kolibu not too big for 12 beds? Or? <laughs> um, yes, I think with the, with the Kolibu size, which is about um, virtually sometimes hitting 2,000, if you, you 2,000 beds, sometimes if you look at some of the other patients who are kept on benches and other mm -hmm. things, about 1 to 2% of those beds should have been ICU. Wow. Yes. Ideally. Ideally. But that didn't actually materialize over the last number of years. I think the present administration has tried and opened a medical ICU, which is in its infancy. Yeah, and this and is that's six beds. Yes, that is six beds. And then uh, plastic the plastics also has six beds. beds. No, it's it's six, ICU, six beds, yes. Six yes. ICU, so right. roughly 12 beds. So it's 12 in his outfit, 12 in plastics, six. But then that's for plastics. So yeah, that's for plastics. Well, for well, beds, but can you can, can, can plastics. cardio move somebody there? Um, um, it depends. Why not? Sometimes, yes. He is receiving obstetric yes. cases now in surgery. Yeah. So if there's an ICU bed in in plastic, and why the patient, yes. So you may just have to, but now obstetrics, I think, need their own intensive care. Okay, right there. They're looking at the so, cases that are coming in. They may have to get their own. Well, why, why haven't we? Uh, taking that side serious because we seem to be very keen on 600 bed, 400 bed, 500 bed, but we, we and we, the citizens or ordinary guys, also don't pay attention to how many beds are in ICU. We just want to hear that you know there are 400 beds in this hospital, therefore, we call me and part also. But that, no, I think over the years people haven't um, appreciated the fact that a lot of people die because there are no. I see beds. Mm. I can just imagine what is happening in the regions. Yeah. Well, occasionally, the they fly patients from as far as Tamade, Borga to us. If they survive, then we'll try and treat them, and then they get better. But one main thing has been the fact that intensive care is expensive, very expensive. And I think over the years, people have thought that it just dealt with a, s a small proportion of the patients who were ill. Mm. So it wasn't important. Until we started getting disasters and tragedies and accidents, and all of a sudden people realize that we have to do something about that. It is sad when young people die, children, young adults. We're talking about young adults, yes. the, uh, the, US, the, you know, the tech girl. Yeah. Yes. No, so, so what happened? The, the ICU unit was closed? or the, yeah, So they closed. couldn't do surgery? It was closed yes. for renovation, as he told you, um, maybe behind the set. Um, for neuro cases, once they operate, you have to keep them in ICU to recover properly before they can go to the ward. So if you close for renovation, um, you'll also limit opportunities for others to have surgery. So people are put on waiting. There's no alternative? Um, I wish no. there was. The thing is, the, some of the surgeries are so extensive that when you open somebody's head, you do surgery. When you finish, sometimes they don't breathe. They can't maintain their heart function. So you have to maybe put them on a breathing machine for 48 hours. If you do that, then the chances of their reco recovering is good. It's negligent for me to do a big case like that without having a recourse for a place to treat them after okay. the surgery has been done. Wow. It's, negli it's negligent. Yeah, you yeah. kill them. Wow. You kill them, yes. So you, you'd rather sort of give them some, prolong it, keep them comfortable and hope to God that... That's a very difficult, yeah. uh, yes. Scenario, what, what it means is that it the, the, once the person is still alive and breathing, you pray that the opportunity will come and there will be a bed available. Sometimes what happens is that we, we just... We, we, there's a bed available, we run, pick one person and do it. 
uh, it's not only so how then do you decide because there are like four people waiting we look at the one that is most at risk yeah. and i think that depends on the surgeons mm. they discuss yeah. we take a decision and sometimes when a bed is available we may even do a case on a sunday or on a saturday just because there's a, an available ventilator or bed because if you don't that bed could be filled by an emergency or a third case from somewhere else and wow. the patient loses the chance of having their surgery so presently surgery is not working general surgery they haven't worked for four weeks five weeks yeah, doing for elective cases. yes for elective it's cases because the recovery ward as i said now there are six patients who are intensive care units in their recovery ward so there's nowhere to put their cases if they are done in theater so they haven't done proper elective that's cold cases for the last five weeks well wow. and hopefully if things work out well that icu should be opening in the next two to three weeks yeah and how many beds will that come in at? that's 12. that is 12. 12 beds yes. okay so then we'll free their recovery wards then they can do their normal routine cases yes so the doctor will just keep saying, come next week, come yeah, next that week. That's exactly the that point. Is the, that that's is the exactly point. what the that point is, is the, happening. That is the, yes. That See, is the difficulty. So people misconstrue that as if the doctor needs something from the patient. Yes. No. There's simply no space to operate, except the emergency. I know doctors are trained to detach yourself. But how, how, I mean, how do you feel if I kept coming to you with my hernia and complaining and you kept telling me, come next week, come? I mean, does it affect you or you are trained to look, let me just isolate myself from his problems? I can, I can simply explain that to you. I know recently we made the news and um, there were three clinics that were closed uh, at surgery. These were some of the pro issues they had. Having to look into somebody's uh, face and telling the person, well, I know you are ill. I know we're supposed to operate on you, but... Uh, we don't have operating space, let me use that word now. So come, let's say, in a month. Maybe we would have solved the problem. No. A month, patient is here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can you do another month? And keeps on going mm. on. So it was heartbreaking for some of them. They came to my office and I said, well, we are trying to expedite action and flying the items in rather than shipping by sea so that we'll be able to open the ICU and run. But having said it beautifully, if we open and there's no money to maintain that service, we'll be back where we started. That's the issue now. Let me take a break here and uh, send your comments in and let's see uh, what, is it that, you know, like I said earlier, that maybe you and I, you know, having put pressure on, you know, the uh, medical fraternity or those in power, because we, you know, we always say we want a cheap compound, we want a hospital, so they build a hospital and then that's it. But I personally have been wondered that if you build a hospital, you need to go further and build the ICU, you know, until I'm being educated. And I don't know if you are the same, maybe you can also confess. And then we channel our energies towards uh, that, you know, many ICUs for hospitals that are being built around. Because otherwise, you know, you can't even have your surgery because there's nowhere to treat you. Stay tuned, we're coming back. Well, thank you very much for staying in. We are looking at the IC unit, which is basically an emergency. When you come out of surgery, you need to go to the ICU intensive care department because you may not be able to breathe, you may not be able to, uh, your kidneys may not be working, and so they plug you all up, and this machine looks after you. But this machine is not for the Christmas, as we have been told. It will charge you money, and therefore, if we don't have the money, it closes down. And since health, is everything so I want to hear your comments 0560 800 000 0560 uh, send your comments in or questions in so we take it from there but during the break uh, prof you were talking about that the ordinary nurse won't be able to work in an ICU unit you need to upgrade yourself but are, are nurses upgrading themselves um, yes, I think the, the, one of the good things about the hospital is they are sponsoring nurses to train in critical care nursing. 
the problem is we don't have enough. After your uh, basic nursing, you have to go to a post-basic school mm -hmm. and do the critical care nursing for about 18 months. And it's just the beginning. Uh, when you even come out, you are not experienced enough. You still have to be mentored and supervised mm. for you to get the Because you can't get experience. anything wrong there. No. no. That's the problem. Split second. Split second, your patient is dead. Oof. The decisions are minute by minute. So they are specialized. So it's not every whether nurse to give that can adrenaline, work. Whether to give adrenaline, yes. whether to shock them, yes. whether to not. So yes. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very difficult area. Very um, stressful. Mm -hmm. So we still have to train quite a number of those nurses. We don't have enough. Uh, at the moment, presently, we need a cohort of about 40, 50 nurses. And then they work shorter periods because of... Um, no, they do the normal the um, eight-hour eight shifts. Eight hour shifts. Eight hour shifts. Yes. Normal eight-hour shifts. But they have less free time. Your patient, you are with your patient all the time. Sometimes you need two nurses to one patient instead of normally it's one to one. Just literally. Yes, literally. And if the patient is very ill, sometimes two nurses to to a patient. So uh, the care is is very close. That's why it's called intensive care. Wow. Yes, it's intensive. Gadgets are monitoring you, you are watching the human beings by you. This, this may not be your fault, but at the moment, this, as government is not employed, so it's not your fault. So, you know, where, 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 even if they were nurses, where would you get them from? Um, in, in terms of critical care nurses, there's a, there's a general shortage to the whole country. Uh, a huge problem. Is it because but, it's not attractive? Um, no, I think it's a relatively new subspecialty in nursing. Mm. Um, they are even now training most of the trainers to train more people. I think it's mm. taking some time to do that. And the only school that trains them can take a maximum of 50 a year. Whoa. There are ICUs in one, I can count about five ICUs in Accra alone. In the police hospital, 37. Bank of Ghana is opening one. Uh, Ridge is also opening one. And then a few of the regions, Kath uh, of teaching hospital, and a few other places. They all need those nurses. So it's going to take a number of years for us to actually catch up. Wow. Yes. Is it because we haven't been, I don't know if serious is a good word, or we haven't paid attention to it? I mean, I'm trying to be as mild as possible. No, I think the concept of intensive care in Ghana wasn't taken very seriously for, for a number of years. Now, I think it's becoming more obvious. After, you remember the stadium disaster yeah. and a few other disasters that have happened, then people realize all of a sudden it's a big gap in the, in the health care, which is, is, uh, the government is trying to address. But it's going to take a number of years because it's such subspecialized that you can't just pick people and put them in and expect them to work. Are the doctors in ICU also specialized yes. for ICU? Yes, the, the vast majority of the doctors are trained anesthetists who have finished their uh, specialization and done maybe a year or two in, in critical care um, medicine, yes. It's a, it's a sub-specialization on its own, super specialization. Wow. Yes. It takes that, you know, we are people who it takes a long time to learn from even our mistakes, even our tragedy. I mean, it rained a few minutes ago yeah. last week, and again, you know, uh, a few people were caught handed. Are we ever going to, you know, come into the realization that, listen, it's a matter of life and death, so we should jump on board? And what, what can we do to get people to come on board? I'm mentioning this, um, if somebody almost drowned, or if you take the June, uh, third unfortunate uh, events. Some of those people could have been saved if we had functioning ICUs all over the place. Because the first few minutes or hours is critical. If you're able to stabilize a the patient, they go above the danger, and voila, you have them back. Wow. You feel that they are downhill and they are off. So, this is why this is very necessary. So unfortunately for us, we are facing two evils. First, not enough ICU spaces, and even the few you have, you can't afford it. 
Let me take some of your messages. Nana, this is a very revealing, and I feel sad as I listen to the doctors explain why and how people die. Do we have a Ministry of Health? What's the, uh, the objective? Oh, God, save Ghana. This is Sami in Bawe. Let me get another one. Uh, Nana, I was... I was to use your medium in soliciting the professional view of your guest about the bundle tariff regime in health financing in Ghana. Is it sustainable? I foresee a situation where our public health facilities running to financial deadlock based of, based of the risk associated with the bundle tariff regime. I am Awal Ishak, resident of Tamale. What's the bundle tariff? Uh, well, if we have, if I think I understand him, mm. we have something we call the kind of uh, composite billing. Yeah. Uh, where, let's say I'm coming in for surgery. Mm. It is not only what the surgeon is going to do in theater. He has to give the anesthesia. Mm -hmm. That's a service. Yeah. And it ought to be paid for. There are laughs that ought to be paid for. So all those services come at a cost. Okay. So you have to put all together and charge the patient. Okay. So <clears throat> in reality, if you have to put the full cost of anesth for anesthesia, full cost for lab, full cost for around the actual surgery, mm -hmm. and then your number of days in the, um, in, on the ward, put all together. That's a huge cost here. So if you have to charge that amount, how many Ghanaians can afford it? Even now, the, in advance world, they can't afford out of pocket. That's why they are on insurance. Mm. So insurance takes care of this. Unfortunately for the majority of us here, we pay out of pocket. And so to be able to buy, and you know how, excuse me, the CD is misbehaving. And we are importing all this thing from out there. So each day the cost is escalating. So how, how will this trust fund thing work? Here's the deal. I always want to paint this picture. Mm. You can be the, even the richest man in Ghana, mm. traveling in your Maserati or your Ferrari. Boom, an accident. You are brought in, nobody even knows who you are. You don't even, even if you have an ATM card on you, you can't even assess your money. Mm. Yes, and anything we have to do for you in the hospital comes at the cost. Unfortunately, you collapsed. There you collapsed. So why are you going to get the out of pocket thing? You have, we have to take care of you. And sometimes you need all these expensive medication tubes to take care of you. And if you don't have a fund we can rely on to buy these things and, and take care of you so that when you come up or you are better, you're able to now pay from your pocket, you will die. Even before your relatives show up to say, uh, here's the money. So we are, if you like, you can even see this as a form of an insurance. So for if all there's of us. no assurance, uh, you won't be looked after or that's what uh, we are trying to prevent. ICU. That's uh, what we are no, trying to prevent. Now yes. we do. No, we try. We try to. But it will run out. Exactly yes. the point. Uh, without uh, people paying, um, if we were to You'll be, be seeing to everybody free. Mm -hmm. We'll close down. We'll close down. In six months. We'll close down. The, 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 the price, this uh, 1200 is it the most cost effective or could it be brought down a bit so that... That's essentially the no, minimum. It, in the, that is the minimum. <laughs> no, the if, minimum. You, if you actually follow a patient who is brought into an ICU mm -hmm. who needs that particular um, care, you are brought in, uh, we take over your airway, we use tubes, we put you on a breathing machine, which has circuits which may have to be changed every two to three days. Some of them are disposable. We have to, we can't measure your blood pressure using a normal BP cuff. We put a tube in your artery and so we can see your blood pressure bit by bit. We take a blood from you every two to three hours, it goes to the lab. If you are very ill, we can take 60, 70 of those samples. Each one is approximately 80 CDs. And that is just a small part of it. Leave is 48 CDs every two months, though. 
<laughs> but that is that is the that is a, just a small part of it. The drugs haven't come. Tell me yet. If your kidneys are not working, it means you'll be dialyzed every day, which is about a hundred um, um, dollars or hundred euros. Is this extreme or is this something that could happen? No, 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 no. It's 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 common. Um, about 40, 50 percent of the cases we get from obstetrics come in with uh, acute renal failure. So we we take them to the dialysis unit daily for dialysis and bring them back. And the, the dialysis unit is not paid. They have a, they have a huge debt from obstetrics as well. Let me okay. let me let me catch up. Uh, please, I want to ask Prof. Is government aware of these problems in our national hospital? Are leaders aware of these serious issues? I don't, uh, I don't seem we are a serious country because government does not seem to care about the citizenry from Kufurudia. And that's the thing, we always vote for them and they do check up in South Africa. So we, you and I, we have to sit up on these things. Uh, we have to sit up on it. I told you, my MP, she's going to give birth in America. Can you believe it? Uh, Nana, Ghanaians do not appreciate the health care is expensive. This is very unfortunate. However, I think with better management, uh, these and these in, in, this in charge of our facilities, these challenges can be overcome gradually. You did not send your name. This one says, Nana, see the real picture? And people are blowing cash on hampers without conscience. Brooks from Bulga. Nana, the reason why most nurses don't want to specialize in critical care is that it's an advanced diploma program. It should be made degree and see many nurses, including myself, will go and specialize by Faraz in Tamale. So you have to give them a degree. No, Actually, they started a degree. They started a degree, Faraz. They started a degree. Uh, this is where the government should churn his resources to help the needy than this hamper stuff. Well, has there been some hamper business written <laughs> recently? Because everybody seems to be angry about some hamper. Uh, listening to this program, I am scared. God save us. Ferguson, Itadi, I told you, be very afraid. So what? I need to call this trust and say, look, I'll put 10 CDs in every month. Or corporations like multimedia will say, look, take 2,000 of my money towards this. Or how, who's going to put money in it? Uh, pardon me to use my local language. Hmm. We need everybody to contribute. Ideally, if we had a very comprehensive kind of insurance, we probably won't be sitting here. And since everybody's complaining about hampers, how do we know that the guy managing this fund has not got access to hampers? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is where the fidelity came in. Yeah. Um, the funds, they are using all their branches in, in the country to collect the funds, and it's in the bank. And then there's a, a team of trustees in charge. I'm even not one of them. Mm. So... He needs the equipment and the, and the consumables to work. Mm. So he will request that of the, the trustees to buy for him to work. That is how it's going okay. to be. So as we contribute, we have a pool of funds for those who come in. And then when you are better and you are leaving, you pay your fees and go. We know there may be some who can't actually afford it. That's fine. This is why we all are like we are having a shared kind of uh, interest in this. If, one. if that happens, aren't we going to say, well, there's a trust fund, so I'm not, I can't I can't afford to pay it? Well, at least it's a stage, and it's it's it's. This is why people have to understand: if you don't contribute and the funds dry out, even those with the money, there will not be an ICU for you to to I mean, assess at all. Do you remember the, the, uh, the, the president of Togo mm -hmm. when he had his heart attack in, in, in Togo? Um, and he died before they could even put him on a plane. I think at that time they didn't have enough ICU facilities in, in his country. So you can be very wealthy, extremely wealthy, to be taken to any part of the world. But somebody has to keep you alive. And the, yes, for you to be alive and then get the air, that air ambulance to take you out. And I think just to add to, to what um, Dr. Siam is saying, um, he's saying it's a shared responsibility. It's like an insurance. Those who are well, those who can afford, 
can put the money into the kitty. I mean, Doc, uh, to, to, just to step in there, I mean, there are very few people in this country that, I, even I personally, you know, that can stay there a week old. A day is a, a, a problem. <laughs> no, the thing is, if, if we have quite a lot of money, if a lot of people put money into it, then it means when you come in, I'm not well, looking you know, at you. You keep saying that those who can afford should pay those. I'm thinking, I mean, there, there are not many people I know who can. I mean, the moving pink <laughs> even doesn't charge that. <laughs> well, the, the, the good this news is, is the good this news is, a is that star hotel, oh. <laughs> this is the issue. The good news is that if all the, the gadgets are functioning yes. and the consumables are available, yes. he can get you out of the place in yes. two three days. Yes. Mm. Yes. So we minimize the cost. Yes. Mm -hmm. But if these things are not available, say you are brought in, yes, the gadgets are there, but it's no money true. even to buy the drugs to get you out of the place. So you choke the system. So instead of a two day, three day admission. You can be there for a week or two mm. weeks. This is what we are trying to prevent. Mm. We, get, we go in, focus, hit it hard, you're out of danger. Then so we are, we are uh, is there a costing to say maybe for 12 bed, averagely I need a million CDs a month or three million CDs a month to satisfactorily operate a 12 bed ICU? Is there some costing like that so that you, at least you know what you are? targeting for actually we can we can we can do very that very easily mm. we yes. can do that the thing is we depends on your bed occupancy mm -hmm. ours is almost 100 yeah, yeah. Well, because we, one bed somebody gets out of the bed somebody's waiting to jump into it so if you actually look at the number of beds the average uh, stay is about uh, three to five days wow. we've got somebody who stayed for 74 days hey yes he survived He's just gone to the ward uh, three days ago, 74 days. He would have been dead. He was on a breathing machine for 74 days. Now, how can he pay unless he sells everything he has, every house, everything he has to come and pay? So if we have this insurance system where a lot of people contribute a little bit, then it means when people come in, you don't actually look at their faces or what they have. You just treat them. Using the same standard for everybody, without it doesn't matter. Minister, yes. teacher. Yes, it has to be the same standard, and we just have to prioritize and decide which patients are actually going to benefit properly from from care in the ICU. So, so at the moment, what well, you uh, telling everybody to go to Fidelity to say where's the transfer and putting something in? Yes, they, as soon as you go there and even mention a critical care fund. They will, you can pay in, but uh, I have the numbers and I also have the mobile uh, wallet numbers for to, to be announced when, when you give us the opportunity. Hmm. So who, who, are you trying, who are you trying to target more, the corporate bodies? Everybody. everybody. I have actually contributed, yes. and I mean everybody. And don't be looking at millions or thousands of dollars. Is that what you can do a direct debit? Yes. The bank the, will do the, yeah, they will do a direct debit to their account. So that means if you have a standing one down your account, then we'll the trustees are already in place. Yes, they are in place. So, so have they released any fund yet, or we are actually building it up now? The mm. hospital itself has some a few innovative ways of generating some funds, and it's going in there. And so we are asking for the public to also assist, and all will go in there. And it's becoming it. half of your time it's money will be no bad though. No. <laughs> 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 I don't know if it's for God in the country. Uh, because by your tight money is God's. Uh, then you take another. Well, but the charge is for God now. <laughs> if you give five to the tight, give five to Don't the worry, fund. I for the churches. I'm going there to go and solicit. <laughs> and thank you for bringing it up. I will you be there. Now. They will be seeing my face. I'll go there. The thing now the thing is, right now it's even becoming more critical. Yeah. In about two weeks. We are going full scale, yeah. opening up. Then this thing becomes an issue, even more. Now it is. But because we haven't made it, uh, the, the, the best available, so to speak, I, I'm even feeling sad, shy, I'm sad to talking about this. It means you're actually losing people who are not getting in there. So people are dying. People are dying. But we don't even know. Let me take care. But they little, don't get opportunity I'll to take get a in little there. break here, and I urge all corporate companies, particularly those who do betas, those who do telecoms, uh, you know, you really support the entertainment industry, you know, very well. And I encourage you. All I'm saying is that 
let's channel a little bit of money, you know, towards this. And it will be a really good cause and proper corporate social responsibility on the behalf of all corporations where I'm sure you can hang a big placard somewhere to say, look, I pay this amount towards your, you know, your, your emergency care. And we shall be all proud of it. I'm taking a quick break and I'm coming back. Hmm, we are we are all very afraid. Uh, this one is from Thelma in a crisis. Nana, kindly check the children emergency unit. Babies share beds. You and I know babies are prone to infections. Uh, the messages are coming thick and fast, and I wasn't the only one who's afraid. We are all afraid. Uh, just tell us why the Kolebu emergency unit should be in crisis. Are people treated there for free? What happens to the money collected? Governments must continue to resource hospital generate, hospitals generating revenue. Let's go and take another one. It says, uh, wait until you become a victim and you know how it feels. This is Atu Intadi. I know Atu, and even without becoming, uh, it's scary. Nana, please, the president should stop building the stadium at the new Edubiasi a district, not even a municipality. Uh, please, Nana, we should tell the president to stop putting up the stadia and use the money to improve Kolebu emergency unit. Wahala, oh, you didn't bring your name. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> don't blame it on the president. Don't blame it on you and I. You go to mm -hmm. a DBS and probably that's what they requested for. <laughs> Intensive care nursing training is not new in Ghana. The state has paid leap se lip service to the entire, the entire of emergency, critical care and intensive care in general. For instance, government of the day is currently touting itself or building new hospitals. Okay, I don't want to narrow it down to uh, any blame game because it's a culture that's been there. You don't want to say, oh yeah, yeah, this government should come in and all of a sudden he should build all the ICU. We have all built, you know, contributed towards it. Hello, no, no, I think Christians and Muslim fraternity should spearhead this court for God's agenda. The luxurious activity won't save life. True. I like that. One. <laughs> I True. like the last comment. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? If if some if there's a corporation listening or philanthropist listening, and myself, you know, I'm going to divide my tight. So my pastor is going to be upset with you. Half half and half half. What? 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 What should we do? Well, there are three modes for, that you can contribute. Mm -hmm. um, for those who want to pay directly into the account, I will quote the account number. It's with fidelity, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a bit a long one, though, but mm -hmm. I'll still mention it. Mm -hmm. So the branch is rich branch, but since they are using all so their the branches, so it the doesn't matter number, anymore. Yeah. So the account number is 107. 107-003-003-20-20-4-0-0-1-5. 15. That's so, the account number. So 107-003-204-0015. Yes. Okay. That is the account number account. at Fidelity. So Fidelity. any branch of Fidelity, if you pay in, it's going to the critical care fund Okay. for callable. Then those who are interested in mobile wallets, yeah. uh, MTN, uh -huh. you'll be using 055. 055. 48. 48. 716 716 29 29 and then for airtel money mm -hmm. 026 026 106 106 106 5017 50 5017 yeah 026 106 5017 that's airtel money airtel money and then uh, uh, MTN. mtn is 055 48 71629 that's right. And then the account number is uh, 107 003 By all means, I will pay my quota. But before I end, mm -hmm. let me announce to you, as you already know, that on the 26th of March, whatever it is you're doing, all roads will be leading to Adumasa. Five years on the throne as a chief. Uh, so I'm celebrating my five years. 
and uh, I've started a wonderful, wonderful school project which you don't want to miss. You need to come and see. I say it's the most modern Saito building in the whole of Ghana. Fully air conditioned, WC, name it, with an IT center in there. It's Dumasa GIS, if I may say. You have to come and see. Our dance why I started her reading project. She's still collecting books. So if you have any books to donate, please, please, please be generous and donate as a book. We're setting up the library and the reading project. And all those of you who love culture, you don't want to miss this. There's going to be culture. There's going to be color. So the 26th of March, we are all going to Adumasa. But for you, Adumasa citizens, the events start from Monday the 21st all through to the Monday when we go to Jekiti Beach. But for the guests coming, we're looking after you on Saturday. We're expecting Dr. Khan to come. I send invitation, but he says he can come. <laughs> but thank you very much for this education, for this enlightenment. And I urge everyone uh, to pay their quota. We have gotten so many things wrong. I hope, as for this one, dear, we can stand anywhere in Busu. As for Ghana, I see you. The Okong Kwadia, you are safe. And this, we're talking about life. So I want to say thank you very much. And to you at home, tomorrow we'll be back to do this all over again. Thank you for watching.